So now that we've learned a little bit about Java, I want to start talking about how we can create Java code to represent objects in the world around us. But before we dive in and start coding, I would like to spend some time talking about how to design these objects so that we actually have a plan when we begin coding instead of just diving in head first. So what I'm going to do is walk you through a design exercise for an object that's going to represent a computer. Um, so in order to do that, I'm first going to create a Java file for this object. So I'll do that uh, by right clicking and selecting a new class and I'll type in the name of the object that I want, which in this case is just going to be computer. And it will go ahead and give me this blank computer class for me to start typing in code. Now instead of typing in code, I want to design this class first. Every class contains two major features. We have the properties, so the attributes that define a class. What, what is it that actually makes this object unique from all other objects of this type? And then we also have behaviors. Behaviors are things that can be performed by this object or performed on this object. So let's start with the properties. In Java, we call these fields, and they'll typically go at the very top of the class file. So if we think about a computer, there are lots of things that we can use to define it. We can make a very, very long list. Um, but to keep this simple, we're going to choose a, a, few short, uh, a, few, a short list of things that we want to use to represent our computer. So we'll do things such as um, list the memory of our computer perhaps the size of our computer. We'll indicate some information about the processor and maybe the brand, who makes the computer, who, who actually made this thing. I'll include a label up here at the top to indicate that these are going to be our fields. Now, when you're thinking about designing, when you're thinking about choosing fields for an object, there's a relationship that you can use to help determine whether something should be a field or not. Um, we say that it's a has a relationship. So if I think about a computer, I can say a computer has a size, a computer has a processor, a computer has a brand, a computer has memory. So if we can use that relationship to de describe attributes of our computer, that means that it's an acceptable field. It's an acceptable field to include in our design. The next thing that we want to talk about when when it comes to designing our classes, when it comes to uh, designing our fields in particular, are data types. Each one of these fields is going to have a data type associated with it. So at this point, I think it's good to visit each one and decide what data type is most appropriate. So for memory in a computer, this is often represented in gigabytes. And usually the number is rather small. In this computer, for example, the one that I'm looking at right now, I have about eight gigabytes of memory. So this sounds like it would be a good um, use case for an integer. I can use an integer to represent the memory that my computer has. Um, sizes of computers can vary, vary uh, quite a bit. Um, so it depends on whether you're talking about a laptop versus a desktop. Uh, they make very small laptops. Uh, could be a tablet. So there are lots of factors that come into play. But there are some pretty standard sizes, especially when we talk about laptops. They come in uh, sizes of like 15.6 inches, 13.6 inches, things like that, which to me sounds like a double or a float, a floating point value. The processor is typically represented in speed, and that speed is typically represented in gigahertz. So we could represent that as um, uh, perhaps a double, 4.4 gigahertz. Actually, that's a very, very fast processor. I doubt my processor is that fast. More like 1.2 or 1.5 gigahertz or, or 2 gigahertz or something like that. So I think a, a double would be sufficient for that one as well. And then finally, the brand. This is who made the computer. So my computer happens to be made by Lenovo. A lot of people have Macs, which are made by Apple. Um, Dell is another popular manufacturer. This would be represented by a string. There are lots of other fields that we could include here if we wanted to. The nice thing about um, designing objects in this way is that it's very easy to go back and add fields to the list later on if necessary. So now that we have our fields taken care of, let's talk about the behaviors. Behaviors are actions. Behaviors are verbs. Behaviors are things that are going to be happening um, with this object. So let's think about things that a computer can do 
or things that we can do to a computer. One thing that we want to be able to do is, well, first let me include a header here for the behaviors. One thing that we want to be able to do with our computers is to be able to create them. In fact, this is going to be true of nearly every single object of every single class that we design. We're going to need some way to create it. In fact, there's a special term for this. It's called a constructor. Nearly every class that we create is going to have a constructor, which allows us to create an instance of this particular object. That'll become more clear when we actually um, implement this object in future videos. So we'll, we'll uh, make sure to include a behavior to create this, uh, create this object. Then we might also want to get some information about this object. So we might want to um, get the brand name, for example. We might also want to get the size or get the processing speed, for example, or get the memory. Maybe we um, have had this computer for a while and it's due for an upgrade. Well, we can add memory, right? We can add memory or we can swap out the processor for a new one, for example. So we can actually change components of this particular computer. And then finally, one other method that's very common across all classes is displaying a bunch of information about this class as a string. It's a very special kind of behavior that we'll call toString. I'll show you how to implement this method in the following video. But let me include that on my list of behaviors. Display information as a string. So we've got this list of fields, and we have this list of behaviors. Again, I want to reiterate the difference between the two. Fields we think of as attributes. Fields are going to have data types associated with them. Behaviors are verbs. Behaviors are actions that take place. These eventually will become methods in our class. So what we're going to do in the next video is actually use this design to implement our class, to make it behave in the way that we want. And I'll also show you how to create instances of objects and use objects in your code.